Hi, I'm Gabby Bear. I'm sure glad you turned my magic button because now I can tell you a fun and exciting story. And at the same time, I'd like to be your very special friend. Every time you hear this tone, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook so you can read along with me. Right now, I'm going to tell you a story full of adventure about my two woodpecker friends, the Peck brothers, Glenwood and Sherwood. <laughs> They're identical twins. They live together in the forest, not too far from my old car home. You could say they're like two peas in a pod. <laughs> I mean, the Peck brothers look alike, act alike, and even talk alike. They say the same things at the same time. Are you ready for my story? Here goes. As you've probably already guessed, the Peck brothers are not your normal everyday woodpeckers. At one time, the wild pair were in big trouble with other animals and nature herself. It all started when the Peck brothers decided they were going to peck down a tree that was blocking their view of the valley below. It was a nice, healthy tree, and it provided a lot of shade for Willie Goat's favorite grass patch that he loved to eat in. You see, the shade from the tree protected the grass from the sun so it wouldn't dry up. Well, the Peck brothers didn't care about Willie's food. They just went right ahead and pecked that tree to the ground. As the two rascals pecked away, they said to each other, Boy, pecking down this tree is going to give us a great view of the valley, right, Brother Peck? Right, Brother Peck? Besides Willie Goat, the Peck brothers forgot to take their friends into consideration when they pecked down the tree. Several birds who lived in that tree had to find new homes. Willie thought Glenwood and Sherwood were downright rude when he said, Gabby, those Peck brothers are, are thinking only of themselves. Soon I won't have any grass to eat, and the birds don't have a tree to live in. It's terrible. Well, Willie was right. It was thoughtless and sort of silly for the Peck brothers to be carrying on the way they were. So Willie and I decided we would keep an eye on the two woodpeckers, thinking maybe we could stop them from causing more trouble. Willie and I followed the Peck brothers from their tree home to a people park. There were kid people playing on slides and swings and lots of adult people having picnics. Willie and I peeked out from behind some bushes just in time to see the Peck brothers land on the edge of a trash can. They were delighted with what they found. They exclaimed to one another, Hey, this is fantastic! Look at all this leftover food! <laughs> we're really going to have ourselves a feast! <laughs> well, I guess I can't blame the Peck brothers for being excited. There were some pretty good pickings in that trash can. The woodpeckers collected all the goodies, including the napkins, wrappers, and plates that were stuck to the food. They flew away from the people park in a hurry, anxious to eat. Willie and I ran after them as fast as we could go. The Peck brothers beat Willie and I back to their tree home. And when we arrived, the twin birds were eating all the leftovers they had gathered at the park. Now, that was okay. But what they were doing with the paper trash that came with the leftovers was not okay. The Peck brothers threw the trash everywhere. It was piled up all around their tree home. What a mess! Willie summed it up best. Yuck! The Peck brothers are being as sloppy as they can be, Gabby. What's the matter with them anyway? Are they losing their noodles? I agreed with Willie and decided it was time to talk with the Peck brothers. Willie and I marched up to their tree and looked upward. Just as we did, some food wrappings landed on our faces. That made me a little upset. I told the Peck brothers they were turning our nice forest into the city dump. The Peck brothers weren't seeing things my way when they said, Why should you care, Gabby Bear? It's not your home, it's ours. So we can do what we want. Besides, we're having a good time, right, Brother Peck? Ha, <laughs> right, Brother Peck. Well, getting through to the Peck brothers was like walking through a tree. I mean, I just couldn't convince them that they don't live alone in the forest. It was then that I noticed something strange about the tree the Peck brothers called home. 
They had pecked holes all over it, up and down both sides. It looked more like Swiss cheese than a tree. And I knew right then and there the tree wasn't long for this world. There was just no way it could survive with all those holes. I told the Peck brothers they were destroying their tree home and asked them why they had pecked the tree so full of holes. The Peck brothers said to me, the answer's simple, Gabby Bear. We wanted to have air conditioning. Ha <laughs> ha! It's really nice and cool up here now. The Peck brothers finished their picnic lunch and flew off toward Farmer Grumble's farm. Willie and I knew that at the rate those birds were causing trouble, Grumble's farm was no place for them to be. So once again, Willie and I took off, running after the flying brothers. <laughs> Willie was getting tired of the twins. He told me, Gabby, these two birds are making me feel like a private detective. I mean, if this keeps up, we're going to have to get an airplane just to keep up with them. <laughs> I have to admit, I was getting tired from chasing Glenwood and Sherwood, too. But more than that, I was becoming concerned over their shenanigans and downright careless attitude about nature. It was quite a chase, and Willie and I were exhausted. But we made it to Farmer Grumble's place just in time to see the Peck brothers swoop down on Grumble's pickle patch. It was lunchtime, and the Peck brothers were smacking beets for some of Grumble's prized pickles. You see, Farmer Grumble's took great pride in his pickles, and Glenwood and Sherwood took great pride in eating them. I heard the twins say, Wow! Farmer Grumble's pickles look better than they did the last time we were here. Yeah, let's have lunch, right, Brother Peck? <laughs> right, Brother Peck? And lunch they did. The Peck brothers pecked each pickle only once or twice, then moved on to the next pickle. It was the most wasteful thing I'd ever seen. The birds went from row to row of pickles until they were full. There wasn't a pickle left untouched. That's right, they made one meal out of a whole pickle patch. Willie was upset when he exclaimed, Look at the patch, Gabby Bear. Every pickle they pecked is going to spoil in the sun. They deserve to be caught by Farmer Grumbles. Well, that's almost what happened. You see, Grumbles came out of his barn and saw his prized pickles all destroyed. But he didn't see the Peck brothers, because they were long gone. Instead, Grumbles saw Willie and me, and we were looking pretty guilty because Willie loves pickles, and since he didn't have any grass to eat that morning, he couldn't resist scooping up a pickle with his rainbow horn and flipping it into his mouth. Farmer Grumble saw Willie and yelled out, Gabby Bear, Willie Goat, I might have known it would be you two eating my pickles. Well, when I get my hands on you, you're going to be in a real pickle. And with that, Grumbles went after us. He ran after me while mean old Bully Goat chased after Willie. Willie and I hightailed it lickety-split, but it looked like we were going to get caught. Just then, however, Grumbles tripped over a rope that held his hay wagon up on the hill. The wagon broke loose and started rolling downhill mighty fast. It was heading for old Grumbles' new green tractor. Farmer Grumbles hollered out as loud as he could. Bully Goat, stop the hay wagon before it ruins my tractor. Bully stopped chasing Willie Goat and grabbed the hay wagon rope in his teeth. He slowed the wagon down a little, but the old hay wagon was heavy and began to pull him down the hill. It gained speed as it went. Farmer Grumble saw this, and so, having no choice, he grabbed hold of Bully Goat's tail. <laughs> what a sight! <laughs> First the wagon pulling Bully Goat, then Bully Goat pulling Grumbles. <laughs> what? It looked like a funny train. Finally, Grumbles and Bully were able to stop the wagon, and lucky for Willy Goat and me, it provided a distraction for us to get away from the farm. The Peck brothers continued acting crazy. The trash under their tree home was piling higher and higher, and like he predicted, Willy Goat visited his favorite spot for eating grass, but the grass was all dried up and brown. Since Glenwood and Sherwood pecked down the tree, there was no shade left. 
Willie was sad when he told me. Gabby, there won't be any grass growing here for years. I'll have to find a new place to eat. Well, it was springtime, and nature was about to make a big move into summer. You see, in the spring, the snow melts in the mountains. The water becomes like little rivers, and the water travels down into the valley through my forest and the dark forest. A lot of water runs into the magical stream, and pretty flowers grow everywhere. Everywhere, that is, except around the Peck Brothers' tree home, because the flowers couldn't grow through all the trash under their tree. And because Willie's grass was all gone, the ground became a big mud puddle. The Peck Brothers didn't seem to mind, as they said. Sure is brown around here this year. Yeah, <laughs> the whole world's starting to look like chocolate cake. The world may have looked like a chocolate cake to the Peck Brothers, but for everybody else in the forest, it looked like a mess. <coughs> Willie and I went to visit the Peck Brothers to see if we could talk some sense into them. They stayed up in their tree home. Willie and I stayed on the ground. Before I could start to talk, however, the tree collapsed. It started to fall toward the ground. It seems Glenwood and Sherwood had over-air conditioned their home with too many holes. The tree got weak and couldn't stand up. Willie and I jumped back as the tree fell smack dab into the big mud pile. The Peck Brothers landed in the mud and trashed right along with the tree. The two birds wrestled around in the mess as they exclaimed, Hey, what's going on here? Our home is ruined. This mud is all gooey and the trash stinks. Right, Brother Peck? Right, Brother Peck. The woodpeckers were so covered with mud, they couldn't fly. Figuring they'd had enough of their own medicine, Willie and I helped the brothers out of the mud. I told them to take a good look around and see what they had done to our friend, Mother Nature. Glenwood and Sherwood lowered their beaks and said in a not-so-proud tone, Gabby Bear, you were right all along. We haven't been treating nature right. Right, Brother Peck? <laughs> right, Brother Peck? <laughs> <laughs> I was sure glad the Peck brothers figured out they had made a mistake. In fact, I was so glad I wrote a song about it. It went like this. Please don't waste the earth. Mother Nature worked so hard to give it birth. If we don't take care of it, who else can? So let's keep this pretty place spick and span. <laughs> well, that's my story about the Peck brothers. They were never wasteful with nature again. In fact, they now fly around and patrol the forest to make sure nobody else does. <laughs> so it's goodbye for now. I hope you had a good time. I sure did. And remember, the next time you want to hear a fun and exciting story from Gabby Bear, just turn my magic button. <laughs>